On average, in our lives, we meet 80,000 people. It's so easy to say you know someone. On social media, all it takes is the click of a follow button to feel you have an understanding of who someone is. But how many people can you say you truly know? I think that in order to truly know someone, they have to give you a piece of themselves. This story is a piece of me. I am Ava McHugh. I get good grades. I'm student council president. I'm a varsity athlete. I love chicken wings. I love my friends, my three dogs, and my family. I'm a third generation matchmaker. I am fiery and passionate. I cry a lot. And some people might say I'm a bit much. This is my mom. Many people know her because she is always around. I mean, seriously, I've never come home to an empty house, ever. She comes to every one of my sports games, and I will be the first to admit they are not always the most fun to watch. She puts fresh flowers on my bedside table every week. We get our nails done together and volunteer at the local animal shelter together. She makes my breakfast, my lunch, and my dinner every single day. She is the most selfless person I know, almost to a fault. And she gives her life every day to help the people she loves and the people she doesn't. I feel extremely lucky to have her. What many people don't know is that my mom has treatment-resistant severe mental illness. I've never known her to be completely healthy. Until I came, my mom had been healthy her whole life, and then I came, and she started to hear voices. These voices told her to kill her newborn daughter and herself. After this, she was diagnosed with treatment-resistant bipolar disorder and postpartum psychosis. From there, our lives became intertwined with the harsh realities of her illness. I couldn't really pinpoint what was different about my mom when I was younger. She slept a lot or stayed up all night cleaning. She laughed a lot and cried a lot. She tried to save every animal or person she saw on the street and tried to sell all of our furniture. It wasn't until first grade that I started to piece together what was going on. All dressed up in my homemade pilgrim costume, my dad came to pick me up from our Thanksgiving feast at school. When we got to the car, my mom was missing. And my dad started to look for her. But all the events that took place next are a blur because all my first grade mind could think about was that my mom was gone. We found out she ran away to the parking lot of a local church. The crisis was averted for that day, but I will never forget the day I realized why my mom was different. My childhood is littered with memories of similar experiences and visits to the hospital to see my mom. I remember getting my elementary school spirit wear, learning to skip, and visiting my mom in the psychiatric ward all in the same day. There isn't a day that goes by that I don't worry about my mom. This has been my entire life, birth to now. You might think that this is supposed to be a sad, story about how my mom's mental illness has ruined my life, but it is exactly the opposite, because sometimes out of the deepest despair comes the greatest gifts. I can't help but feel extremely grateful for the gifts my mom's mental illness has given me. 
The biggest thing I've learned is how to be compassionate. We try to portray ourselves through social media and appearances that we have it all together. And most people are fools, but so many people have obstacles that they struggle to overcome every day. It's so easy to forget that there are things bigger than school or work when you're living in it. Through my mom's mental illness, I've learned that everyone has something, no matter how they appear on the outside. And I've learned that my situation is not unique. It's, helped, it's taught me to use, open my ears to listen, my eyes to see beyond a person's facade, and use my voice to tell my story. I told this story to a class of 25 people, and every day leading up to it, I had anxieties about being vulnerable and sharing this piece of myself. I thought that nobody would ever be able to see me or my mom in the same way ever again. But to be honest with you, I am the one who has been different. There was so much pain and passion and sorrow and strength and love all balled up inside me. When the words left my mouth, I realized that every person in the room held a piece of my soul. I felt free. During those 10 minutes, I gave 25 whole people the chance to truly know me. I shared my story with the internet, and since then I haven't stopped getting messages from people who were surprised by my story, who wanted to offer their support, or who wanted to share their own story. But the commonality between every response was that people had no clue what I was going through on a day-to-day -day basis. It begs the question, how many people do you truly know? There are no flowers sent to my mom while she's in the hospital. There is no GoFundMe or meal train to help my family. There is no cure. There is still a stigma. I am inspired to tell this story because in our community, I hear of people struggling with mental illness all the time. It is important to make this story accessible in order to destigmatize mental illness and to allow us to talk more honestly and truly about who we are. My hope for each of you is that when you see someone crying, offer them comfort. When you see someone struggling, let them know that they don't need to struggle alone. When you begin to make an assumption, remember that things aren't always how they appear. When you hear someone has mental illness, treat it as any other illness. It is my hope that by giving you this piece of myself today, I can inspire you to give a piece of yourself to someone else so that we can talk more, we can get to know each other on a deeper level. Thank you.